All right, so the first phase of voting has begun, so we've decided to compile a ready reckoner for you. Here is all you need to know about the first phase. Now, a total of about 90 crore voters are eligible to vote. Voting will happen in the 91 constituencies across 20, 18 states and two union territories. Almost about 1,300 candidates are in the fray in the elections in the voting that is to take place just today. And there are five states to, in fact, watch out for. And these are the battleground states that will be playing a major role in government formation. Firstly is the state of Uttar Pradesh. 96 candidates are competing for eight seats here in the first phase. And next, of course, is the big state of Andhra Pradesh. 319 candidates are competing for about 25 seats here. And third is Telangana, where the fate of 443 candidates will be decided. They are fighting for 17 seats. The number four on the list is Bihar, where 44 candidates are competing for four seats in Bihar. And finally, we have Uttarakhand, where 52 candidates are on the ballot box, will be competing for about five seats here. And let's also take a look as to who are the big faces in the frame. Now, here are the high-profile candidates of the first phase. Now, let's take a look at Union Minister V.K. Singh. Well, he's aiming for a re-election from Ghaziabad. Next, we have Satyapal Singh, another Union Minister who's seeking a re-election from Bhagpat. Dr. Mahesh Sharma, the present Minister of State for Culture. He also is fighting to keep his seat from Gautam Budhanagar. Now on to the Congress now where former Chief Minister Hari Shravat is contesting from Nanital. This seat has been a traditional Congress bastion. It will be interesting to see whether the Congress will be able to retain it. And also on the line will of course be the seat of Union Minister Kiran Rijuju who will be testing his fate at the ballot box in Arunachal West. Now in the state of Bihar, former Chief Minister Jitin Ram Manji is contesting from Gaya and Chirag Paswan will be contesting from Jamui. Now, five years back, he had won his first election from here. And also, Union Minister for Infrastructure Nitin Gatkari will try to retain his home turf of Nagpur. And our final big name on the face of the first list is, of course, the firebrand leader Asaduddin Oasi, who is up for re election in Hyderabad. It will be very interesting to see as to how all of this pans out and we'll of course be tracking the developments as they unfold. So voting has begun across these 91 looks about constituencies. The voting will be on till 6 p.m. and it will be very interesting to see as to what the voter turnout will be because remember it is the first phase of polling and a lot of course will depend on this. And we have our... Reporters who are joining us, Pragya Jha is joining us from Nagpur. Ishan Vani, our correspondent, is joining us from Bandipura. Nishchita Virendra, our correspondent, is in fact joining us from Hyderabad. And Nagain Singh, our correspondent, is joining us from Ghaziabad. Nagain, good morning to you. Let me begin with you first, because Ghaziabad is in fact the constituency from where General V.K. Singh will, of course, be testing his fate. Give us a sense of what it is like in Ghaziabad and what are the big issues on which the people of Ghaziabad will be voting. Uh, good morning, Saleh. Well, here in Ghaziabad, it's a very important seat for BJP because uh, 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 Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. V.K. Singh, he is fighting election from here. And uh, last time he won with uh, more than 5 lakh votes. And this time he is fighting the charges of uh, unavailability. That has been one of the concerns. And the other uh -huh. candidate who will be fighting from here, Mr. Bansal, who is from BSP, is going to give him a good fight. Because uh, here we have been uh, talking to many of the people and many of the people who are going to vote over here. They have been talking about uh, the unavailability of general. V.K. Singh. But of course, Mr. Modi has come up with the agenda of national security and Mr. V.K. Singh being one of the army chiefs in the past. Uh, Mr. V.K. Singh has a big ground over here and uh, earlier, last uh, last time when people voted over here, they voted in large numbers. It was record voting of 56%. So this year, 
will uh, people are saying that uh, they will be voting for him because uh, they agree with Narendra Modi. So so far there have not been a large number of people who have been arriving because it's just 10 or 15 minutes uh, of the voting which has right. started. But we are expecting that a huge turnout will be here because uh, all the area which comes under in this uh, particular seat is uh, urban area and the semi-urban area. That is the reason that we are expecting that this year also people are going to vote in large numbers. Well, last year it was uh, 56%, so we're expecting that with time, right. the number of people turning out for vote will be increasing. And more than 28 lakh voters will be voting for, for this constituency. And uh, out of it, uh, many are the new time, first time voters. And uh, they, they are also going to vote for this place. Absolutely. Many issues have been, have been rising here. And the few issues which have been here is uh, extension of NH24, which is very nearby from this area. And that has been one of the concerns. Metro is another concern right. because the connectivity with uh, New Delhi is uh, a very important issue for this particular area of Ghaziabad. So they believe that General V.K. Singh has worked very well in the past, but uh, of course his un unavailability is a big issue among the people who are going to vote. Absolutely indeed, Nagin. It'll be very interesting to see as to what a verdict the people of India will have to deliver on General V.K. Singh. And the other big seat, of course, which we'll be tracking is the Gautam Budnagar seat, from where the Minister of State for Culture, Mahesh Sharma, will of course be contesting. Do continue to stay on with this, Nagin. Let's now shift our attention north to Jammu and Kashmir, where two Lok Sabha constituencies of Jammu and Baramula are heading for polls in the first phase of elections. And Ishan, if I can bring you in on this, considering the troubled state of affairs in Jammu and Kashmir, how much of a challenge has it been for the election commission to in fact organize these polls? Give us a sense of the security situation there and how many people are in fact lining up to cast their vote, although considering the fact that it is still very early hours as voting has just begun at 7 a.m. this morning. Well, if we start by talking about the security issues, it's clear like the election commission did not conduct assembly elections in the valley. At the same time, they went in the five-phase election for the Lok Sabha seats, uh, which are five in number. Uh, so it was interesting to see that how the election commission uh, would have conducted these elections, given the fact that, that the grim security scenario was prevalent in the Kashmir Valley, particularly after the Pulwama attack. Uh, so a lot of security arrangements have been made. There have been additional companies which were brought in by the uh, uh, sent by the centre, which includes CRPF, the Indian Army, the uh, CISF, and other. Security forces. So they have been deployed at every nook and corner, but at the same time, there were some miscreants who tried to pelt stones at the security forces yesterday. But at the same time, the situation is still under control. Uh, but interesting competition in the Kashmir Valley, given the fact that elections are happening at a time when Pulwama has happened. Uh, the Jammu seat of the Lok Sabha and Baramula seat is uh, competition is happening. It's a tough competition between the PDP National Conference in the Kashmir Valley, and at the same time, in Jammu, we're seeing that there's an anti BJP friend which has shaped. Uh, which has taken a shape in form of the PDP and uh, National Conference uh, appealing the voters to vote for the Congress and defeat a BJP candidate who's in the fray for this particular election. And remember, apart from this, it's a difficult and uh, difficult terrains in the Kashmir Valley, and some of these places are snowbound. We already know that on Monday, uh, two to three days back, there were teams of the Election Commission who who went and the polling staff who have uh, you know walked several miles to reach those places which are really not connected well through the roads. So development will be a key issue in the Kashmir. Valley. In Kashmir, more than 10 lakh voters will choose the faith of nine the candidates who are in the fray for the Baramula Lok Sabha seat. While as in Jammu, there will be 13, more than 13 lakh voters will vote for uh, you know, in Jammu belt, which includes Samba, Rajori and Poonch. So it's, a, it's, just, it's, a, it's an interesting competition. Now we are seeing an anti-BJP friend are taking shape in Jammu. At the same time in Kashmir Valley, we are seeing a lot of new regional parties, including the People's Conference, led by a former separatist leader, Sajad Ghani Lone, who came into mainstream and has fielded mm -hmm. a former Jammu Kashmir police Corp, and he is having a fair chance of winning this particular seat. Apart from him, there are other independent candidates who are also contesting. So the nine candidates from the South Kashmir, North Kashmir belt who are in the fray and whose faith will be sealed today in the Kashmir Valley. Absolutely indeed. We'll of course be tracking the developments as they unfold through the day. Do continue to stay with, it, stay with us, Ishan Wani. Let us now shift our attention to what is happening in Nagpur from where my colleague Pragya Jha joins us. Good morning to you, Pragya. Now this, of course, is a very interesting battle that will play out. Nitin Gadkari, the union minister, it is he who is, of course, contesting from there. Give us a sense of what the mood is like in Nagpur, considering the very fractious kind of uh, an equation which the BJP had with its ally Shiv Sena. Talk to us a bit about, you know, what are the key issues 
on which the people of Nagpur will be voting today. That's right, Saleh. The BJP's Union Minister for Transport Shipping, uh, Nitin Gadkari, is... Uh, you know, his seat right now is in the fray, in fact, and he is contesting against the Congress's Nana Potole. Now, this is going to be a tough fight because Nana Potole in the year 2014 uh, was in the BJP. However, he resigned last year. Now, while he was in the BJP, he defeated uh, Congress strongman Praful Patel from Bandara Gondia constituency. And then later, of course, uh, he resigned and he gave the reason being uh, the BJP's mismanagement of agrarian crisis. Now, talking about about a gradient crisis that is one of the most uh, important issue in the Vidharbha region. Nagpur comes in Maharashtra's Vidharbha region and seven seats, seven constituencies from the Vidharbha region are going to poll today and the remaining three will go to poll in the second phase of the election that is on April 18th. And uh, we must also tell you that um, Nagpur is also the RSS bastion. Now that is the central ideology uh, centre for the Bharatiya Janta Party. And apart from Nitin Gadkari, there is also Minister of State for whom Hansraj Ahir from Chandrapur, uh, who is one of the candidates in today's voting in today's election. Now there are as many as 1 crore 33 lakh, so a little over 1 crore 33 lakh voters who are eligible to exercise their franchise today. There are over 5,069 polling booths at 591 places. 23,000 and plus security officials have been deployed in and around Nagpur so that uh, transparent and smooth conducting of elections can take place. And other than that, uh, talking specifically on the mm -hmm. issues that surround the Vidharbha region, one of the re uh, one of the issues that I spoke to you about is the agrarian crisis. Other than that, uh, also farm distress, and uh, there have been severe droughts in the region. Uh, so, and and also, uh, you know, these have been attributed to lack of uh, proper policies when it comes to irrigation, irrigation systems not being in place, government not being able to, in fact, fulfil uh, the you know the issues that the farmers had got to the government. We must remember that. Uh, with in the, with, from the Vidarbha region, there were several long marches, two long marches that had come to Mumbai uh, from Nashik and uh, from Vidarbha as well. Farmers had come marching all the way and they had brought their issues to the government and they said that if we do not get a resolution to this, then the government will have to face the music uh, during the elections. And now this is the time really uh, when the voter can you know, uh, exercise their franchise and bring to the government's notice what has really appealed them or what has not. Uh, so this is an integral seat in right. that way and I'm standing right now outside uh, Nitin Gadkari's polling station. He is scheduled to come here with his full family, with his entire family All at 9.30am right. and this is the particular polling booth. If my camera person can move around and show you a few visuals, uh, it's been, it's it's almost 7.18 and a few votes would have been casted. We're just giving you visuals from outside Nitin Gadkari's polling station All right. here in Nagpur's Mahal area. Absolutely indeed, Pragya. Do continue to stay on with us. It is a very interesting battle that is, of course, unfolding in Nagpur. We'll, of course, be tracking the developments. And meanwhile, let's now get my colleague Nishita Virendra, who is joining us live from Hyderabad. Good morning to you, Nishita. This, this, of course, in many ways is a very, very important battle that is playing out in the two Telugu-speaking states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. 17 seats in Telangana and 25 seats in Andhra are up for grabs. And give us a sense of what the mood is like, because in Andhra Pradesh, it appears that anti-incumbency is a huge factor and Jagan Mohan Reddy is hoping to be the king in Andhra Pradesh and the king maker in New Delhi. Give us a sense of what his chances are like. Absolutely, uh, Saleh, very good morning to you too. In fact, Jagan Mohan Reddy probably along with uh, K. Chandra Shekhar Rao are hoping to be kingmakers in New Delhi. They might be regional parties but let's not forget that these are the two regional parties who have not aligned with any national parties, who have not aligned with any bloc and that is the reason why it has become amply clear over the last few months that they are keeping their options open depending on the results that will be thrown up on the 23rd of May. Voters have already started, started gathering at the 
the polling booth behind me. We are currently at Jubilee Hills, one of the high-profile areas of uh, Hyderabad. And in a short while from now, we will see some of the more prominent sinistas arriving here to cast their ballot. But Hyderabad is probably one of the constituencies that the TRS has gone easy on out of the 17 constituencies here. Rasaduddin Oasi of the AIMIM is seeking uh, for a fourth term. And as we know, there has been an overt understanding between the TRS uh, as well as uh, the AIMIM to fight the elections jointly. Uh, but uh, it is the national implications of these elections, both in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, that really uh, need to be focused on. Uh, Jagan and uh, K. Chandrasekhar Rao have come together, and together they feel that if they do manage to get all the seats, then it will be around 42 seats, and that can be a sizable chunk at the Indian Parliament, even if they manage to garner about 35-odd seats, which is about 15 seats in uh, Telangana, as well as about 20 seats in uh, Andhra, uh, then they can still have a very strong say. They can work towards bringing what they claim to be a third front, a federal front. Uh, coming back to Andhra and its issues uh, that need to be highlighted uh, as uh, the people are going into polls, of course, the issue that has been most talked about is the special category uh, status for uh, Andhra that was promised to it during the bifurcation in 2014. That has become a massive bone of contention, even leading uh, to the relationship between Chandra Babu Naidu as well as the NDA splitting. And that is something that not just Chandra Babu Naidu, but also uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy has rallied behind. Uh, Telangana is just coming out of uh, an assembly election that took place in December 2018 after K. Chandrasekhar Rao, the chief minister, decided to dissolve the assembly and call for early polls. And uh, we saw a landslide victory for K. Chandrasekhar Rao with 88 seats. Mm -hmm. uh, so with these two states going into polls uh, with their 17 and 25 seats, uh, we will see them play a, a, a crucial role in the center. At least that's what the leaders here are hoping for, to get better SOPs uh, for their uh, respective states. As uh, we know, TRS is heavily dependent on, on its welfare schemes for its popularity, whereas uh, Chandra Babu Naidu has been harping on the issue of funding from the center for Amaravati, uh, for several other projects, uh, for the revenue deficit that it incurred because of the bifurcation and also the special category status. Absolutely indeed. That, that of course, will be a very crucial issue that will play out in the minds of the voters as, as they, of course, head to polls in the state of Andhra Pradesh, the special category status, which both leaders, Chandra Babu Naidu and uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy are harp harping upon. Uh, thank you very much indeed to all of our reporters. Nichita Varendra from Hyderabad, Pragyaja from Nagpur, um, Nagain Singh from Ghaziabad, and also Ishan Vani, who joined us from uh, Srinagar, will of course be tracking the developments as they unfold. It is just early minutes of voting. His voting has just commenced about 23 minutes ago. It's 7.23, and voting will continue till about 6 p.m. This, of course, is the first phase of the total seven phases of the elections that will take place. The results, of course, will be out on the 23rd of May. We'll be tracking the details as they unfold. But for the time being, let's take a look as to what else is making news across India.